Good evening, everyone. So the context of my teaching tonight is a small group uh, Bible study at my house for young adults. And we will be covering Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 to 23. And just for a little context, um, this particular section, Paul is warning the Colossians about a particular false teaching or philosophy that basically takes away from the essence of the gospel. And instead of um, the focus of, of, of this philosophy being centered on Christ, it was centered on the individual trying to curb their, their physical passions through um, human tradition. So it's, it's, it's a second warning. The first warning begins in chapter two of verse eight, and he continues this warning in chapter 16. Can I um, have someone read from verse 16 to 23, please? Therefore do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food, drink, or observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Don't let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. Is that it? It grows. Yes, okay. Um, okay. So, Paul instructs the believers, don't let anyone control you. And um, the main theme of this particular passage that I want you to keep in mind is that imposed restrictions cannot produce true spirituality. Imposed restrictions cannot produce true spirituality. True spirituality is only centered on Christ. So um, the previous, but as you realize, the verse 60, it starts with, therefore. That is because um, Paul is continuing, or he's, he's bringing forth a conclusion about something that he started talking about before. And then verse, 15, verse 14 and 15, Paul breaks down the reason why they shouldn't adhere to these human traditions. Because Christ died on the cross, and as a result of dying on the cross, he exposed um, the elemental forces of this world, and he took them cap captive. So, so, the, so the Colossian Christians no longer had to be held bondage to these um, human traditions. So um, verse 16, it's, it, Paul warns in this section, for them not to continue to, to, to adhere to these human traditions. And also in verse 18, as we someone read um, earlier, it says, um, not for, for them not to, to be captive to human philosophy and human tradition. He begins with the conjunction, therefore, which you know is a connection with the teaching preceded, the advice in verse 15 and 16. The traditions listed in verse 16 are connected to Judaism and Greek mythology. So he says, don't let anyone judge you with human traditions that are a shadow of the true reality. So in, in your mind, what do you think the true reality Paul is talking about? What is the shadow of the true reality that he mentions? True reality is the original gospel. Okay, excuse me? The original gospel, the true reality. The original gospel, okay, kind of there. Does anyone else want to try? The reality of our kind of position in relation to God. So Okay, okay. Well I believe I believe the, the you had something to say, Charlie? I believe the true reality that he's talking about is the true reality that we realize in Christ. Okay, the shadow of the things that Paul is talking about is the human tradition, such as um, the, the law of Moses, whereas they had to, to do these certain things, okay, they had to do do these certain actions as a result to curb the spiritual, the, sorry, the physical passions, and to, to reach to a level of spirituality. But these things were just a shadow of what we were supposed to be realized in Christ. So no longer should we have to um, try to, to, to partake or to adhere to this human tradition, because through Christ, uh, we can now be transformed. So he was telling them, listen, these <coughs> things, they no longer matter. Don't let anyone judge you. Don't let anyone come let condemn you based on human traditions. Because these things are a shadow. They have already passed away. 
the reality is found in Christ. So Christ needs to be the center of everything that you do. So also he mentions some of these human traditions. Some of these human traditions that he mentions are dietary restrictions, special days, um, and also um, um, sorry, religious festivals. And these types of, of, of traditions, as, as, as he, we can see, they, they go back to the, the Jewish culture, the Jewish tradition. So I want you to answer this question. What are some traditions in our life that are mundane? What do you think? Think of some traditions that we practice every day, or you have practiced in the, the past, and you think that they are mundane. Ironing your clothes. Ironing your clothes. Okay, what else? Brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth. Okay. So what about spirituality? Some spiritual tradition that we have been growing up, being taught in the church, that after a while it gets a little, you know, mundane, you just go through the going to Sunday school. Going to Sunday school, okay. Reading your Bible. Reading your Bible. Okay, so how can these traditions enslave us? They can become just like things that we like things that we do without realizing the power behind them. Okay. Also we use reality when we lose reality of why we should do all these things. Very good. Enslaved into the tradition mm -hmm. and neglect the spiritual matter of why. So. Very good. How about when we focus on these traditions as a result of um, them helping us to attain salvation, mm -hmm. then we take the focus off of Christ. That's good. And th this is what the, 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 the problem of this philosophy was. It took the focus off of Christ and it <coughs> placed the focus on the individual. So they were trying to attain this 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 um, spirituality through philosophy, and the philosophy was not just necessarily um, human wisdom or human knowledge, but it was an ethical way of life, an ethical way of life. So they tried to attain spirituality through practices of an ethical way of life. So Paul tells um, the Colossian Christians not to let anyone disqualify them, okay, in verse 18 and 19. Do not let anyone who delight in false humility disqualify you. The word disqualify suggests an umpire who enforces rules and makes decisions. They perform the action to disqualify in the race or to deprive of rightful prize. So they basically saying, listen, don't let anyone judge you. They can't disqualify you. Why can't they disqualify you? Because they didn't die for you. They didn't die for your sin. They did not put to captive all of these human traditions. And because you died with Christ, you no longer have to be judged by these human traditions and these human rules. So why shouldn't I let them disqualify you? Why do you think that you shouldn't let people disqualify you? I'm just not the person. pointed out that uh, these people, they practice false humility, incorrect worship, and they are puffed up and unspiritual. So why would we allow people who are in this type of bracket disqualify us when they're, not, when they're not even spiritual? They don't know what true spirituality is. Okay? So these people seem to be wise and spiritual, but they are not. Verse 19 says that they are not connected to Christ, who is the head of the body. So the application, one of the applications I want you to take up is that no one has the right to condemn you by human tradition. To go spiritually, you have to allow Christ to be the center of your life. You have to allow Christ to be the center of your life. So Paul reminds his sisters of their freedom in Christ in verse 20 and 21. Paul uses a rhetorical question in verse 20. And he says, if you died, if you escape out of the clutches of this world with Christ to this world, 
to the rituals, to the festivals, to the restrictions, and through the worship practices, then why are you putting yourself back in bondage? Mm -hmm. Christ okay. took you out of this place. He freed you from all of these human traditions so that you can live free in the grace of God. So why are you not enslaving yourself? And by enslaving yourself, you will not be able to achieve that true reality and that, uh, that spirituality in Christ. So he's asking, he's basically he's telling them, listen, what are you guys doing? Don't let these people condemn you. Don't let these people tell you that you have to live according to these traditions. Christ has freed you from them. That's good. Okay? So Paul uses, um, sorry, because you died with Christ, uh, you then no longer belong to them. You no longer belong under, the, under their control. You no longer have to submit to those rules. So the application, the second application is we should not allow ourselves to be held captive again to human rules <coughs> such as dietary restrictions, dress code, religious festivals, spiritual disciplines in order to gain God's grace. So you don't have to wear, ladies, you don't have to wear skirt as according to some past traditions. You don't have to wear skirt to, to receive salvation. You don't have to not wear jewelry to receive salvation. You know, I, I grew up in a particular church where uh, unless you did certain things, you weren't considered saved. If you didn't um, live according to certain human traditions, they, they, they said that you, you weren't a true Christian. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to be um, held to these types of traditions. Mm -hmm. So we should not allow ourselves to be held captive again to human rules. So Paul gives reasons to discard valueless regulations. These rules no longer have any value, and the time for them has already passed. Um, the, the, the tradition that he mentioned, they have already passed um, during the Old Testament time and, and, and the time of Judaism. Christ has now fulfilled um, the law of Moses, so now we can realize this experience through Christ. They are based on human origin, so they don't hold supremacy. The only thing that holds supremacy is Christ. Christ is the center of everything. And these regulations serve to indulge the flesh, the, sorry, the flesh rather than curb it. So they were trying to use human tra traditions okay, to curb the flesh, but instead of curbing the flesh, they fed the flesh because the focus was upon them. Mm -hmm. So whenever the focus is upon us, what we're doing, what we're doing, okay. really doing, we feed it into our flesh. How can we feed into our flesh and, and curb the flesh? So Christ said, instead of curbing the flesh, what they're doing, they're getting worse. They're not able to truly um, restrict their, their, their physical passions. So, uh, my final application is self-focused spirituality would lead to more vice. Instead of curbing your physical passions, you will end up feeding it. <coughs> Instead of curbing physical passions, you will end up feeding it. And, and my, my conclusion is true freedom and spirituality is found in experiencing and obeying Christ as Lord of all our of Lord of all of our life. So um, true philosophy is found, is realized, and it can be experienced through Christ. As we experience Christ, Christ transforms us and allows us to grow and to develop into this true spirituality. Amen.